we're going to stand. First, let me say uh, good afternoon and welcome. I should be congratulating you for coming. I look around and I see, can you hear me okay? Can you hear me now? I look around and I see that the smartest gender is here um, in great proportion. <laughs> Uh, my, my, my name is Dr. Chris Link. I, um, I started an integrative and acupuncture practice about six weeks ago. Prior to that, I, I worked as an ER doctor the last 20 years, 11 years here at Capital Region. A uh, lot to cover today. I'm going to try to leave a few minutes for questions at the end. So let's get started. Okay, um, acupuncture, let's get right to the point. <laughs> so here's, here's, here's what I want to say about that. You know, can acupuncture cure cancer? Can it reverse heart disease? Can it, um, can it restore an arthritic joint? Can it cure all pain? The answer to that is no, folks. I'm going to have to burst that bubble. But what I can tell you is that acupuncture can help. It can be one of the things that a doctor can use to help a patient with pain, help a patient with asthma and allergies, help a patient with digestive symptoms, um, help a patient with a lot of different things. There's been recent evidence to show that it helps in infertility. So there's, um, there's a lot of things that it can do, but it's only, it just helps. It's not a panacea. It doesn't cure and do everything. That's, that needs to be understood. My training in acupuncture was at UCLA. I did that in 2005. It was about a nine-month program. I then went on to, to, um, to train in auricular acupuncture. That's acupuncture of the ear and then scalp acupuncture and then advanced pain management and I've done that over the last couple of years. One of, my, one of my highlights of my training was a week I spent with Dr. Neemsau. He's the chief acupuncturist for the U.S. military. He has a clinic at uh, Andrews Air Force Base. He's, he's an expert in battlefield acupuncture and, uh, and I spent a day with him at the Pentagon working on Thanks for putting up your hand. I want everybody to be here. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Do a, little bit, a little bit better? Yeah. Okay, well, this Dr. Neemsau is a, the chief acupuncture for the U.S. Air Force. And on the Friday afternoon when I was there in town, um, we went to the Pentagon and we worked on people of all different ages and all different stripes, from, from sergeants and privates to three and four star generals. It was quite, quite an amazing day. So let's talk about the history of acupuncture a little bit here. <laughs> okay, so we know we know that acupuncture has been around for at least two thousand years. There's a textbook called Neijing. Uh, it was a Chinese textbook, and it was uh, a couple. It's at, at least two thousand years old. In the 1600s, the French. The, the French uh, went to China and they translated some of the textbook. They brought it back to Europe. And in the 1600s, they started to practice there in France and in Europe. And very interestingly, one of the first American acupuncturists was a man named Benny Franklin, who was the grandson of Benjamin Franklin and was with Benjamin Franklin in the 1780s on the diplomatic missions in France. Went with his grandpa and he, and he learned years later, actually, acupuncture. In the 1970s, um, Nixon went to China, as you might remember, and there was a journalist from the New York Times that uh, had appendicitis over there, Get, received acupuncture after his appendicitis, was, had a glowing uh, response to it, came back and wrote a big article in the New York Times, and, and it really opened the doors to acupuncture in the United States after that. Now, in 1991, there was a mummy that was found in the Tyrolean Alps in Europe. And that mummy is carbon dated to 5,000 years old. And there's evidence, we think, that he was having acupuncture. I'll show you that a little bit later. So the way, the way acupuncture works, at least the idea, is that there's these meridian channels that go through our body, the front of our body, the back of our body, and the sides of our body. They have all these different names, like the kidney channel, the small intestine channel, the bladder channel, et cetera, et cetera. And that, that energy that this chi flows through the body, if it's flowing normally and it's balanced, then a person's more likely to be healthy. And if it's blocked, then there's a problem. The, the Chinese had a little bit different idea of these organs than we did. For example, they really thought the kidney was very involved in, in bone function and in teeth. 
but they also think of the kidney as being the heart of vitality of the body. So if the kidney energy gets depleted, a person's vitality is low. Their idea about the spleen channel is not just the immune system that we know about the spleen, but that the spleen somehow is involved in digestion and in reproduction. So it's a little bit different than our, uh, than our, than our, um, our standard physiological understanding these days. So she circulates through the meridians. If we have disease, that energy can be blocked. And so the, the concept, the traditional explanation is that we can unblock these blocked areas of energy and we can create health. We can create a situation in the body that it's more likely to heal itself. And with that, then we have this yin and yang balance in the body. Now that's the traditional idea. More the modern idea is that, and there's evidence of this, that it releases endorphins and kelphalins and dynorphins, and those big names are all they are is natural painkillers that our bodies make. And that, it, that it causes or allows our body to relax better. That we can work on muscle pain by trigger points, by decreasing the inflammation in muscles and the tension in muscles. And then it also works in these mysterious ways that we don't fully understand yet. Up at the top left, you see a, a woman with a baby, and the baby's pointed in the wrong direction, isn't it? Because it needs to be head down. Well, there's this interesting point right, right down there at the bottom, bladder 67, right on the little toe, is if you stimulate that point, you can help flip that baby. And there's been modern scientific evidence that that helps, not all the time, but sometimes. And it's certainly better than a breech delivery or a C-section. And it's, you know, um, but we don't, we don't know exactly how that works. Not yet, we will someday. Now, in acupuncture, there are microsystems. Some of them are used for diagnosis. When you come in to see me or somebody comes in to see me, I might ask them to stick out their tongue. And I can tell them things about their, their, the way their body's functioning by the way their tongue looks. In the front of the tongue, I can get information about the heart and the lungs, the side of the tongue, the liver, way in the back of the kidneys. And on the pulse, we can do the same thing. Feeling the pulse in different areas, we can get information about different organ systems. There are also microsystems for treatment. You know, many people have asked me recently, why are you sticking that needle in my ear if my back hurts? <laughs> well, you can see there on the, on the right that, there, that there's a microsystem that varies on the ear that reflect parts of the body. And on the left is the microsystem of the hand, where the, the head is on the middle finger and the arms are on the, the ring finger and the index finger and the legs are on the thumb and the little finger. So those are microsystems, and we use that often. Now this is that mummy, his name is Etsy, and he was found in 1991 in the Tyrolean Alps, and he had tattoos on his body along the bladder line. Now on the left is actually a diagram, and that shows our, our bladder meridian line that goes from the from corner of the eye all the way down to the tip of that toe. It goes down the back, and on this mummy that was five carbon dated 5,000 years ago, he had multiple uh, tattoos right along those bladder points. When they CAT scanned him, they found that he had severe degenerative arthritis of his spine. So interesting. This same mummy um, had a tattoo at this point on the medial aspect, the inner aspect of the leg, it's liver eight point, and that's a point that we use for abdominal pain. They found when they examined him more closely that in his stomach, it was full of parasites and eggs. So clearly he was having some abdominal pain. So this is a suggestion that, that acupuncture may be a lot older than we thought. Okay, some general uses. Many pain conditions, wellness and prevention. You know, one of the concepts of acupuncture is, is helping the body do its own work of healing. To kind of help the body get the obstructions out of the way so that it can heal better itself. Because the body is naturally made to heal. Acupuncture works sometimes when nothing else will work. I've seen that and I, there's lots of evidence about that. Um, but remember that it's not a panacea. Acupuncture is not a panacea. It can help a lot of things and a lot of different people, but it doesn't, it doesn't help everything and it doesn't help everybody. It seems like about seven out of ten people will get relief. And it quite often takes about five or ten visits to really feel the full effect. A lot of people will walk out the first day and think, oh, I feel better already. But some people, it may take three, four, or five visits to really get the feeling that we're going in the right direction. And you know, if at four or five visits, we're really not going in the right direction, we're gonna change what we're doing or we're gonna suggest other, other directions for other people. <coughs>